Uh, hey guys, AJ here, and, um, uh, I'm really bored as shit right now, like, really bored out of my mind. Um, and, I, so I thought I'd just make a video, and, uh, I just watched the movie The Avengers, and, um, I noticed a lot more Easter eggs, so, I, I, I've never seen people mention before, um, but, uh, I, yeah, so I just wanted to share them with you. So, um, I've seen the Avengers before, I saw it the day it came out, it was, like, my birthday party, and, um, uh, I, I did like it a lot, it's actually one of my favorite movies, but, as most of you know, I think I said this before, that I always thought that the Avengers was really, really overrated, uh, because it kind of is, I mean, I didn't think it was as good as people did say it was, and I had only seen it once, which was, like, two years ago when it came out. Uh, and I just watched it on Netflix a minute ago. That's why you can see Netflix on the screen. Um, but, um, yeah, so, uh, I, I haven't really, uh, heard of any Easter eggs in that, in The Avengers besides, uh, Stan Lee's cameo, uh, when they were talking about, uh, what they thought about The Avengers. Um, but I didn't notice a few more at first, um, there was one part in the middle where, uh, it was, I think it was after the part where they were in Germany battling Loki. Uh, it was, uh, Nick Fury, uh, Iron Man, Hulk, and, um, Captain America were talking, and they were talking about the Tesseract. Um, and then in the background, you saw Agent Coulson, and he was holding, like, he was holding up, like, a piece of paper, and he said, and, um, it looked like a S.H.I.E.L.D. logo, but to me, um, it almost looked like the, a drawing of the face of Rocket Raccoon. Now, you might think this sounds crazy because the Avengers hardly has anything to do with Guardians of the Galaxy, but I really think it might have been, or even if it was a drawing of the S.H.I.E.L.D. logo, it could have meant... To, it could have been meant to resemble Rocket Raccoon, and as most of you know, there has been a lot of talk over uh, a circling around um, of the possibility of the Avengers um, teaming up with Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, we know that's not definitely not going to happen for Age of Ultron because that's already filming, and they would need more time to come up with the plot line since Guardians of the Galaxy just came out. But some are saying that for Avengers 3, that there might be a crossover. Um, so that, that might just be a possibility, even though it probably was before they started even thinking about an idea for a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Because it was uh, 2012, which was two years ago. So it, it could just be a, 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 like a look, but I just thought it could be. Uh, also, as most of you know, if you've seen the Incredible Hulk movie, which came out six years ago, you would know that Edward Norton used to play the Hulk, not Mark Ruffalo, who only played the Hulk in the Avengers, and I believe will be playing the Hulk for Age of Ultron. And, um, uh, so, and, um, as, if you've seen the Incredible Hulk movie at the end, uh, this is kind of a spoiler alert. Uh, uh, the Hulk battles the kind of copy-off villain Hulk, known as the Abomination, uh, and that took place in Harlem, and there's a part where Iron Man and Hulk are talking in the Avengers, and, uh, they're talking about Stark Towers, and he said, you should stop by New York sometime, to come to Stark Towers, and then Hulk says, the last time I was in New York, I blew up Harlem. So that's just kind of a funny thing from seeing even play Hulk in the last movie. Um, I think they're trying to like, uh, to like just let people, like let, uh, trying to make people forget that he didn't play him. Um, but I liked Edward Norton a lot more. Mark Ruffalo is actually one of my least favorite actors. It, but it was, The Avengers is really the only, um, role I was even close to liking him at. Um... Uh, what else do I see? Oh, at, there are two parts they mention this. Um, if you're big Marvel movie buffs, 
you would know that Iron Man was kind of the start to Marvel movies, and um, uh, it kind of started with him. As, as, with that movie, they called it Phase One of all these Marvel movies that would end up going on. Like these are, I think, all the Phase One movies. There was Iron Man, there was The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man Two, um. I think it then it was Captain America the First Avenger. And then it was and then it, the last one was the Avengers. Though that those are the last ones of phase one and then uh the then uh Iron Man three started in phase two and then Guardians of the Galaxy is also in phase two. Uh but since you're but if you're wondering why I skipped the X Men movies, that's because I think Phase one. I think these phases only circle around the uh, the Marvel Avengers movies. Nothing else but the Avengers. Like like because all all the movies I just mentioned only have to do with the Avengers. Um, but at the beginning of the Avengers, since like I said, it was the last movie of Phase one. At the beginning, uh, they mentioned something about Phase two. Um, I, that got me thinking, maybe that means, like, they were trying to tell people that the next movie that they make, circling on the Avengers, will have to do with Phase 2. Um, and then later in the movie, they mentioned, mentioned it again, uh, uh, because, um, Iron Man is looking at, like, these things on a TV or something, and he says, really, what is Phase 2? And then Captain America comes in, and he says... Um, tells you what they're really doing with the Tesseract, and he's like, they're trying to build weapons, but I think that was only mentioned to try to get people off the fact that that could be a potential Easter egg, uh, so I do kind of think that was an Easter egg, like, plotting, uh, forward to saying that there is going to be a Phase 2, um, and also, this is probably the last one I, I've seen, uh, I uh, I noticed that after the credits, I do not think I did see this. Usually, right now, every after any type of superhero Marvel movie, I stay till the credits are done to see if there's any uh, afterward scene, and there usually is. And I don't think I do remember staying after the Avengers to see that because I don't think I knew about that kind of stuff yet. Um. But as most of you know, if you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy, this this is type, kind of a spoiler if you haven't seen it, but there were two villains in the movie. There was Thanos and there was Ronan. Ronan ends up dying at the end. And then Thanos is still alive. And um, after people saw Guardians of the Galaxy, they were saying that Thanos could be a potential villain that they're saving for Age of Ultron. But I thought it was weird because... Um, because when Guardians of the Galaxy came out, they were already filming Age of Ultron, so I thought that that would have been mentioned way before Guardians of the Galaxy came out. Um, but I actually do think that Thanos will be in the movie, because at the, at the last scene of the Avengers after the credits, if you, it's only a few minutes if you want to watch the credits and then just see the movies on Netflix, uh, it shows someone talking on this rock in space, like two people talking, um, and then, right, and then, uh, it reminded me of in Guardians of the Galaxy when Thanos was talking on his, like, throne on this, like, certain rock, and, like, then you see the half face of, of some alien sort of guy, and, uh, it, I, it really looks like Thanos, and then he turns around, and, like, that, for the last second, he has, like, his gigantic purple face that looks like Hulk Hogan, and then, uh, and then you know that that's Thanos, so, and it was Thanos, so, now I'm, I'm getting more closely to making an inference about that Thanos will be in Age of Ultron, it's just weird, because I heard that they're trying to add in a lot of villains for Age of Ultron, which is weird because why isn't it just circling around James Spader's character, which is Ultron, the main villain, but it's weird, I wish that, like, as most of you know that they are coming up with an idea for a Guardians of the Galaxy Avengers crossover, um, 
like, I think it would be better if they saved Thanos for that movie, because there really isn't going to be another villain for that. Um, so, I think it would be better to save Thanos for that. And, but, like, it might be interesting if maybe by the time the Avengers comes out, maybe it will be official that they are making a crossover movie. Maybe the, the end credit scene will feature Guardians of the Galaxy meeting Avengers. It's going to be a very interesting movie, um, but I'm excited to see what they do, and um, I'm also excited to see what they do with Loki for Age of Ultron, because at the end of the Dark World, um, Thor the Dark World, uh, Loki was still alive, and he's kind of like an ally of Thor now, like he was kind of like not really a villain in the Dark World, um, and I'm I'm hoping that they that he, he teams up with the Avengers for the first time. Um, that would be interesting. Oh, but there's also one more Easter egg I noticed. This technically really isn't an Easter egg, but um, I saw that uh, at the beginning of the movie Loki takes his scepter and he like kind of lightly touches Hawkeye's chest and like his eyes turn black. And then I also noticed that in the Dark World, um, uh, Loki takes his scepter and touches Jane Foster's chest, who's Natalie Portman's character in Thor, um, and her eyes turn black, and that, like he kind of brainwashes them. So I think it's just kind of trying to say that uh, his scepter is like his greatest weapon. It's very powerful. Um, I, I really like that Easter egg that they used in Thor The Dark World. So it's technically not an Easter egg in the Avengers, but still, it's just kind of like a nice crossover. Uh, but before we go, I just want to mention one thing that I noticed earlier. Um, if you've seen X-Men Days of Future Past, you know that Quicksilver was in that movie. And his real name is Peter Maximoff, and I believe he is related to Magneto, because when they got to his house to try to recruit him... Uh, I think Wolverine said something that, like, uh, Maximoff, oh shit, and then, like, I think kind of meant something about, like, that Magneto is, like, his, is Quicksilver's father, um, and so, yeah, Quicksilver was a brief character in X-Men Days of Future Past, and if you've seen Captain America the Winter Soldier, and the end credit scene, they showed... Quicksilver and his superhero sister, their two superheroes, and they were locked up in jail. And if you've been uh, listening to the news lately, you will know that Quicksilver and his sister, I forget the sister's name, will be in um, Age of Ultron. Uh, uh, Quicksilver is actually, um, Quicksilver is played by Aaron Taylor Johnson from Kick-Ass. And then, I. Uh, What's her name? Um, Elizabeth Olsen is is the sister, and she's from Old Boy. If you don't know who she is, the new Old Boy, uh, which is a really good movie. You should check it out. Um, but she was in that, and um, uh, and um, but what I thought was weird was in uh in X Men Days of Future Past they feature. Quicksilver as a different actor, but if you're kind of thinking I'm wrong, which I'm not, because they have the same exact name I looked at IMDb and Wikipedia, uh, the two Quicksilvers have the same name, Peter Maximoff and Peter Maximoff, so they're supposed to be the same character, and uh, uh, there are two different Quicksilvers, one is a different character, so I thought at first that maybe... Uh, they could be making it like this new uh, Quicksilver is like the older version, but it wouldn't make sense at all. And if you're wondering why, um, they feature, like I said, I think you said this before, Quicksilver in X Men is featured as, um, is featured as, um, is featured in the 1970s, and Aaron Taylor Johnson is pretty young to play someone who was born in the set, who was like 20 in the 70s. He would probably be 50 by now. So, 
that's what's weird. So it can't be an older version. But what it what's also weird is when they went to Quicksilver's house, they um they showed that he had a little sister, which could potentially be his sister in this movie. So I'm thinking maybe they're tr like since they're both Marvel movies. They're trying to make some sort of connection and getting us confused, and I'm hoping that we'll find out why in Age of Ultron. But this also led me to believe that they're leading this to to come to conclusion with an X-Men Avengers crossover movie, which there hasn't been as much talk about lately, um, not as much as um, Avengers with Guardians of the Galaxy, which would kind of be more interesting. I mean... Um, but it would be really cool with X-Men 2, and I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to see what they do, but I, I'm just really confused because I know this can't be some sort of, like, chain, like, I don't know, it's weird because it's very, it's highly unlikely for a superhero or a villain, more for a superhero, to switch teams, like, have we ever seen Iron Man go over to X Men? I mean, no, that doesn't happen. So, like, I, at first I might have thought I thought that maybe Quicksilver changed from X Men to the Avengers, but then I'm like, no, no, that can't be happening. So I, I just thought it was weird. But if you know anything, leave it in the comments below. I'm I'm surprised to see what they do with it. Just so you guys know. What I would really want to see, but I know this is probably never going to happen in a million years. This is like, the, but this would be the coolest idea out of all, every single superhero movie ever. Is if they did a crossover movie between Marvel and DC, every single superhero, that would be just awesome. And and not just Marvel and DC heroes. It could be like Kick Ass. Uh, it could be any other superhero that I'm forgetting. Um, but I just thought that would be a really cool idea. I even have, like, a name for it. It could be called, like, Justice Assembled or something. But, um, that would be really cool. I, I think that would be a really awesome idea, but it would cost a lot of money, and it would be really hard to feature everyone in the movie because there's so many villains and there's so many superheroes that they wouldn't be able to have everyone on camera at, like, an, at, at, like an even amount of time. So that would be, it would be a really hard movie to film. Um, that's probably why they why they're not gonna make one. Uh, but I just thought it was a cool idea. But yeah. Uh, but thank you for guys for watching. I'll make some more Easter egg videos soon. Um, I think we might do an Uncharted walkthrough later today of the first one. So just stay tuned for that. And um, thank you guys very much for watching. Um, leave a comment and subscribe for more.